If I take a sword and I plunge it in you, right, would it matter if you're my enemy or my friend? Probably not, right? Both of you would still receive equal amounts of damage. But then how do games create systems where like, if I, let's say, throw a potion at you, for example, how does my friend heal, but my enemy take damage? Well, that's what I'm going to show you right now, because I'm not, you know, the best um, and the smartest person when it comes to modeling that is right. I'm insanely smart in every other aspect. Let's actually just take this potion model that I found in the toolbox and let's just scale it up to be around this big so here's what i want this potion to do okay i'm gonna add a script inside of it which i'll you know call potion script very creative i know and whenever this potion gets touched so script.parent touched connect function script.parent being the actual potion what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna loop through every single player we also need to make sure that the player actually has a character right so if not player.character then continue end, meaning we're going to skip this loop and move on to the next player if they don't have a character. But if they do have a character, then we can just uh, give like a variable for that character. And because what I'm trying to do right now is I want to determine the distance between this potion and the player, we need to determine which character's part we're actually going to use for position. And I'm thinking we use their humanoid root part. Okay, so we can say local root is equal to character, and we'll just wait for child humanoid root part. And then as a second parameter, we can give it a timeout of one second, meaning that if it continues waiting for longer than one second, we probably don't have this, like something went wrong and we can just, you know, move on to the next player, which we can do by saying, if not root, then continue end. And now we need to get the actual distance, right? Which I can get by saying local distance is equal to script.parents.position. And then we subtract root.position, but we're not done yet because we got to put these in brackets, blah, 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 right? I know very lengthy process. And then we say dot magnitude or not magnet magnet mag magnitude okay there we go <laughs> which will then give us the distance right and now all we got to do is we can just say if distance is more than 10 then continue end so again if this player is more than 10 studs away from our potion then we're just going to go to the next player and we don't want to do anything but obviously like what are we going to do with this just one potion here we need a way to actually keep on spawning them so what i'll do is i'll take this potion and i'll put it inside of replicated storage then i'll give the player a button okay now here's the thing right normally i would actually you know take effort to like customize this and make it look you know amazing and fabulous and everything remember this is all you're getting <laughs> just a standard button and then i'll add a local script inside of this button that whenever it actually gets pressed right so script.parent that activated we're going to connect it to a function and then we need to actually have a script which spawns this potion whenever the button gets pressed right so i'll make a script and the other thing we got to do is need a way to actually make these two interact right so local script and script how do we tell this script whenever the button gets pressed well we can use a remote event so i can just say game replicated storage wait for child remote event which I'll just quickly copy this right now. And I will say fire server, okay? And in this script, I can do the same thing, except I can do on server event connect function, which will give us the player who pressed the button. And so now what's gonna happen is that whenever the player actually presses the button, I wanna create a new potion. Okay, so I'll say local new potion is equal to game replicated storage, wait for child potion, and then we're gonna clone it. I'm gonna set the potion's name equal to the player's name. And then because I wanna position the potion above the player's head, we actually need to again, check if the player has a character, right? So if not player.character, then return end. But then if they do actually have a character, then we can just say local car is equal to player dot character and from here it's very simple right new potion dot position is equal to character dot head dot position and then let's say plus um we're gonna increase it by 10 vertical studs so we're gonna spawn the potion 10 studs above the player's head and the last thing we gotta do is actually place it inside of the workspace because if it's not in the workspace we can't actually see it in the 3d world and so now if i actually press this button as you can see it summons a potion which then proceeds to comically fall on my head and then just yeah just starts rolling around but now the question is right how do we actually determine the team of both players right how do we get the team of the player who actually threw the potion then how do we get the team of you know whatever player we're currently looping through well what we're gonna do is i'll say local r team as in the team of the person who threw the potion is gonna be equal to game dot players right and we're gonna find first child and as you may remember right in this script I set the potion's name equal to the player's name. So meaning that the potion's name and the player's name are the same thing, right? So we can just say script.parent.name because here script.parent is the potion. So basically we're looking for the player with the same name as the potion. And once we find that player, we just get their team. And so then while we're looping through the other players, we can say local other team is equal to player.team, right? And then we just make a final if statement that says if our team is equal to other team, then 
we're gonna heal, okay? Else, we're going to damage. And the way we do this is actually fairly simple. We just gotta get the humanoid that's inside of the character, right? We take the health, and then we're just gonna add 20 to their health. But then if we're doing damage, well, then we're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna subtract. And yeah, so if I just make, you know, two teams right now, so I'll have team one, and then I'll call this red, and then another team, which I'll call blue. Well, then now if we play the game, right, and I'm on team red, if I throw the potion, then when it gets touched, it checks, okay, is this player near me? Is he on the same team as the player who threw it? Which obviously it is because it's me, right? So what it did right now is it just attempted to consistently heal me. Now the thing is I actually forgot to destroy it, right? So that's actually something we had to do. So script.parent destroy. So because it's not damaging us, we know it's trying to heal us. So we know that this basically works, right? Now, if for example, just for testing purposes, if I were to make local our team equal to like green or something, right, which obviously is not our team, then what's going to happen is that when it throws the potion and it actually, you know, hits us and it detects, okay, so we're close to it, but we're on team red, but the person who threw it is on team green, quote unquote, right? What it's going to do then is it's going to actually damage us, right? So I'm not sure why my player isn't actually seeing the damage, but if I go on the server, as you can see, it actually does take damage. And if I just keep on throwing and throwing and throwing and throwing, that's gonna kill my player. And so if I were to run this game on a test server, right? As you can see, I'm on team blue and all of these other players are on team red. So if I were to throw the potion, both of them get damaged, except for me. But then now if I were to shift into being the third player, as in the player who's on team red and I throw the potion, this guy gets healed, this guy gets damaged. Dun, 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 bam. Like so. And there we go, yeah, we just made an amazing potion, right, which is the equivalent of that sword I mentioned before. Now, if I were to stab my friend, he would actually heal. In-game, obviously, right, in-game. And yeah, so as I clean up this game of teams and scripts and all of that, I want to ask you something, right? Would you be willing to pay 40 bucks for a Discord role, okay? Like, you know, you join my server, you get an amazing, you know, looking role, it's like red or something, right? Would you pay 40 bucks for that? Now, you're probably thinking right now, that does seem worth it, right? I actually would, wouldn't mind paying 40 bucks for a Discord role. So if you're still indecisive, then just for you, uh, as a bonus, I'll give you a six hour course on Roblox Studio, which you can find in the link in the description, right? So hopefully that made my offer of the Discord role a bit more uh, worth it. And yeah, so now whenever your friends ask you like, hey, uh, how, how do people make potions in games? Now you can know, now you can raise your finger, do like the nerd emoji and be like, um, actually, and then you can tell them everything, right? And you're gonna get insane social status validation and cloud. And as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.